All right, so we're going to pick back up where we left off. The class title was were, uh, was The Whispers, or is The Whispers of Babylon, I should say. So, you know, we went over, um, how to, you know, just a couple examples of what they do to uh, seduce us and put us to sleep. We went over the religious, and now we're in, in the uh, policy. So I'm going to go ahead and open up with the uh, video of uh, mass incarceration. Let's watch this. So this is uh, one of their whispers, you know, with the mass incarceration, how they you know, promise to go out and do evil and lock us up. Go ahead and play that video. Historically, comparatively. And the other thing is the rate of incarceration is so high, so socially concentrated, that we're no longer incarcerating the individual, but we're incarcerating whole social groups. The rate of incarceration now is about five times higher than it was historically. Historically, it was 100 per 100,000. Now it's about 500 per 100,000. If we look at prison, if we add jail to that, it's about 700 per 100,000. Nowhere in the world incarcerates as much as we do. We've seen extremely high rates of exposure to the criminal justice system for African-American men with very low levels of schooling. So if we think about black men who were born in the late 1970s and who were growing up through the American prison boom of the 1980s and the 1990s, the chances that they're going to serve time in state or federal prison if they dropped out of high school is about 70 percent. So going to prison for that group of black men with very low levels of schooling, that's become a normal life event and that's really only happened in the last 10 years. We're at this point now where there's about 1.2 million African-American children with a parent who's incarcerated. And that's about one in nine. The research shows the kids who experience parental incarceration have diminished school achievement, they have behavioral problems, depressive symptoms, acting out. And there's also evidence that these kinds of negative effects associated with parental incarceration are concentrated more among boys than among girls. And there's a very real risk here that incarceration becomes an inherited trait. The underlying issue is we've chosen prison as a way to respond to that problem of crime. And there are a whole variety of ways that we could have chosen to respond to that problem of crime. We've chosen the response of the deprivation of liberty and we've chosen the response of the deprivation of liberty for a historically aggrieved group whose liberty in the United States was never firmly established to begin with. All right, that's it on that. And you saw, like I said, they, they just laid out the statistics about those that are in prison and, you know, your father's in prison, your high school dropout, it increases your chance of being in prison. Let's go um, to Isaiah real quick. We'll get a couple scriptures out of Isaiah. Give me Isaiah chapter 3 real quick. Let's start at, I think, is this 9 what I want? Let me see. No, I want 12. 12. That's what I want. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. So this is one of the whispers here is a setup for us. So they know. They do all these. They got all these think tanks together. And they put together all these statistics and everything in order to show that if we do this, we'll get this desired result. Watch this. As for my people, children are their oppressors. So when you look at the statistics, it's young men that terrorize the neighborhood. And when you look at their home, their parenting, the father's incarcerated or he's not in the house. So as a result, these young men oppress the community. Read. And women rule over them. They're coming out of single-parent homes. That's why we have to restore the family. And that restoration takes both parties, male and female. We got to break the cycle. Come on. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err uh -huh. and destroy the way of thy path. The path is the way of the scriptures. So when we have a single parent home, particularly uh, when it says that the women are ruling over these young men, these young men turn around and oppress their community. That's where we're getting the black on black crime from. It's not brothers in their 40s and 50s and 60s terrorizing the neighborhood. Let's go to Isaiah chapter uh, 42, verse 22. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 22. 
But this is a people robbed and spoiled. So we've been robbed as a people. And as a result of us being robbed of our heritage, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, we are spoiled. That's why we are number one in every degenerative disease. We're number one in incarceration rate, poverty, every single measurable metric. We are at the top or the bottom uh, determining what what the... Um, what the uh, 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 what measurement would be like? Wealth will be at the bottom. The property ownership will be at the bottom. Business ownership will be at the bottom. Come on, they are all of them snared in holes. They show one of the holes. We get third rate education. Mass high school dropout equates to mass incarceration rates. Mass single parent homes uh, uh, translates into mass incarceration rates. Come on, and they are hid in prison houses. They are where? Prison houses. Uh huh. They are for a prey. Uh huh. And none deliver it. Right. We are for a prey. I mean, everybody comes in and takes advantage of us in our community. Like I said, you know, I say it many times again. A Chinese man could swim over here to America with a knapsack on his shoulder and set up a business in our community. He comes in and runs a business in a community that's ninety nine percent black. Come on. For a spoil. And none saith restore. Nobody's talking about restoring our neighbors. What do they talk about? Come back in four years and vote again. You didn't get your desired outcome. That's the foolishness of our people. What does it do? It sets limitations on us because they showed in the graph. They showed the, I don't know if we noticed, but it was a charter like it was a man that was taller than each man. It was like going down. Every man that had, he got locked up, so his son's going to get locked up. His son's going to get locked up. And then as a result, his son is more than likely going to get locked up according to the statistics. You want to say something, officer? Right. It's just like the, uh, just like the welfare system. You see kids that grow up on welfare, a lot, of the women, a lot of the women, the next generation ends up on welfare, so on and so forth. Same thing with the prison. Same thing with, like, in the opposite. Usually, if, if, if you have a parent that goes to college and graduates, usually the children will go to college and graduate. So... The, parent, the, the children usually follow in the paths of the parents. That's heavy that you said that. And I just sent something over to him. I played this video before. Play this video. Because well, this man doesn't do these things. He doesn't put together these statistics for no reason. This man, the scriptures say uh, uh, he does a diligent search. Where's that? Was that Psalm 68? Somebody help me out with that. Let's get this real quick. I think it's 64. That's it. 64 and 8. Yes, I want I want five and six. Watch this, and then we're going to play this video. The book of Psalms, chapter 64, verse 5. Mm -hmm. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. Make no mistake about it. The white man encourages himself in an evil matter. Lord, he's out here talking about giving you his medicine. And I'm going to play a clip about them, this lady, the spokeswoman, with this Freudian slip talking about these vaccines. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. Read on. They commune. Of laying snares privily. Right. One of the snares we're dealing with is the, uh, is the prison system. They are privatized jails, and they getting 50 plus thousand dollars off an inmate, and they got them inmates in there making all types of items. I worked, I worked uh, for the Maryland State. I did a job down there. They called it the MCC. They got the inmates in there making all, all your uh, uh, road crew uniforms, state trooper uniforms and all that. They in there making all that stuff for 15 cents a day, man. Come on. Hey, a, a lot oh, of that, uh, a lot of that too, when uh when you call customer service for a lot of these companies, the people that's answering the phone are actually prisoners. A lot of yeah, they do a lot of the customer service. A lot of people don't know that. They also have them we see the chain gang cuz they out there. They have them building uh prefab prefab houses in the south. Okay? When you go down to Louisiana and stuff like that, they still actually got sharecropping down there. Got them out there doing that. Damn. Come on. They say, who shall see them? Right. That's what they say. Ain't nobody going to see that we behind it. Now, nah, the Lord revealing all that wickedness, man. Come on. They search out iniquity. This man is searching out sin. This dude is searching out any type of pit to dig to, for you to fall in. Make no mistake about it. Read. They accomplish a diligent search. Meaning this man leaves no stone unturned. He does all types. You about to see the most ridiculous research. Like, who the hell would think of this? But the scripture is going to show you why he do this. Read on. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. This man, his mind is deep. You, This dude be 20 steps ahead of us because the power of Satan's on this man. Well, look at this video. Nobody would ever think to do an experiment like this. This is it, it just blows me away every time I see it. Watch this. This going to tie into the generational the incarceration. With a lid. The fleas are placed inside the jar 
and the lid is then sealed. They are left undisturbed for three days. Then, when the jar is opened, the fleas will not jump out. In fact, the fleas will never jump higher than the level set by the lid. Their behavior is now set for the rest of their lives. They took the jar away. And when these fleas reproduce, their offspring will automatically follow their example. And fleas lay about 60 eggs a day. So that's three days, three generations of fleas. This man is not experimenting on fleas just to experiment on fleas. No, he's taking that research and looking. He extrapolates his findings out of that research, said, let's go ahead and see what we can do in the black community to use that. So they, we fleas in the jaw. So they say, we got single parent homes. We guarantee 70% of these young men going to drop out of high school and 50% of them going to get locked up based on us doing fleas in the lid. Look, also based on that experiment, right? That's showing you how they can sleep safely at night, knowing that people getting killed on every corner in Baltimore City and in certain parts of D.C., certain parts of Detroit. But they, they move 15 minutes away and feel safe because they know you're not going to leave your neighborhood. Just like them jo just like them fleas wouldn't leave out in a certain certain area. It's like having that, uh, anybody know about an uh, electric dog fence? You train the dog to stay in a certain area. It's the same thing with our people. It's through these experiments they know that that stuff going to work. Right, and 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 they know they get all the men out. They because the, make no mistake about it, the white man knows it's warfare. He take all the men off the battlefield. He got nothing but vulnerable sisters out well, there. Well, turn turn them into homosexuals. Right, that's why he's sleeping sound. That's why we tell you, sisters, y'all got to get your minds right and get in order because you in you are a participant in the war, whether you voluntary or involuntary. Understand what's going on. Let's go to Zechariah nine and twelve because you know we gotta we gotta tr put our hope in the Lord. Then I want Romans fifteen and four. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Turn you to the stronghold. Right. We got to return back to the scriptures. Come on. Ye prisoners of hope. We are the prisoners of hope here. Every last one of us is hoping for a better day. You see the foolishness that's going on? Homosexuality, deadly medicine, uh, 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 the, the brink of anarchy and civil disruption just right around the uh, corner. Come on. Even today do I declare that I will rent double unto thee. Right? Come on, jump to Romans 15 and 4, because we want to deal with the hope. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. So the Bible was written aforetime. What was it written aforetime for? Read. Were written for our learning. Was written for what? Our learning. Read. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right. That's the hope that we have. That's the hope that we have in this Bible. Give me Psalms 146, uh, 6 and 7. Oh, give me, start at 5. Hey, also, real quick. The funny part about it is, is that, remember another scripture said he searched out iniquity, right? A lot of that iniquity that he searched out is right here in the scriptures in our very own book. Right. Seeing seeing the things that we did aforetime and seeing how we was moving the the how we how, the hatred against one another the uh, the discord I was I was reading this morning I was reading um reading uh, the Exodus mm -hmm. and literally the Most High showed all these miracles all the stuff that He did to the Egyptians and immediately after coming out immediately we start murmuring now we just saw all the great stuff that He did and immediately one little thing go wrong and we all ready to turn Moses said look Moses went to the Lord he said look we got to do something. They ready to stone me. They, we ready to put Moses to death because we don't have water. And he didn't just part of the Red Sea and we didn't walk through on, right. on green grass. Right. That's, that's your, our people. That's your Uber Eats today. <laughs> uh, we laughing. Now let's get that in Psalms 146. Psalms. That's another device. Start at verse 5. Psalms 146, verse 5. Uh -huh. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help. What? Happy is he that had the God of Jacob for his help. Right, so the Lord is our God. That's our hope. That's our help. Come on. Whose hope is in the Lord Who's his what? God? Whose hope is in the Lord his God? Right, that's why I hope is not voting for Biden, not uh, uh, whatever, the, they, whatever the false hope they putting out there, the popular persuasion. Come on. Which made heaven and the earth, uh -huh. the sea, and all that therein, uh, that all that therein is, uh -huh. which keepeth truth forever. Read on. Which 
execute its judgment for the oppressed. So the Lord is going to execute the judgment for the oppressed. That's us. Which giveth food to the hungry. Uh -huh. The Lord loseth the prisoners. Right. So that's the hope. Our brothers that's bound behind it because we was doing works dealing with the brothers in prison. They shut us down for now. Because of COVID, that's another way to search out iniquity. We're going to shut this and this down. We're going to shut the airlines down. They can't go nowhere unless they take my medicine. But the Lord going to open up the doors, man. Let's um, let's get another thing, though, with this man's policy, what he did to our Northern Kingdom brothers. Pull up that Wikipedia of uh, Manifest Destiny. So we're going to deal with this man, what he did to, to the brothers and sisters over here on this continent, man. Right, they got graveyards all over the place. The Catholic Church sitting on all types of bones, man. And the Lord bringing out all this even these last days, so we know the white man is the devil. Looking at the news, they just found one in New York and found another one up in uh, in Canada. Go ahead and pull that up, man, on the screen for the people. That It's right up in there. I know I put it in there. Manifest Destiny got to be up in there. If not, look it up. It's an easy thing on Google to look up. So listen to this man's vision. Then I went on um, Psalms 49 after that. Just type it in Manifest Destiny and put it up on the screen. Let's get that up for the people. I thought I sent that over, but we can pull that up quick, though. Bring that up. That's how this man is getting down, man. Zoom in. Zoom in. See, go back to the definition. That's a, that's a big one right there. That, that's giving us a lot. It should be a basic definition. Go back. Hit the back button. Go back. That should be a pretty. But, yep, yep, that's it right there. Blow that up for us. Can we blow that up? The, Mary, the, the manifest desk right there where you're. Uh, Zoom in. There we go. Appreciate that. Manifest destiny. The 19th century doctrine or belief that the expansion of the U.S. throughout the American continent was both justified and inevitable. Right. So they said, man, we're going to do what we want, man. Surely the Lord is like us. We did all this evil over here, smallpox and blankets and all that. That sound real familiar today. You know, but let's go ahead and read that Psalms 49 and 11. Watch this. Psalms 49 verse 11. Their inward thought is... That their house shall continue forever. Right. This man thinks this country going to be here forever. All the wickedness that he done, surely this country going to last forever. That's what his train of thought is, Read. And their dwelling places to all generations. Mm -hmm. They call their lands after their own names. Right. They name their lands after their own selves, man. Give me, go over one, one chapter over, uh, Psalms 50 and verse 21. Because this one, it said it was the, that manifest destiny definition said it was uh, basically of the Lord. That's what they were saying. Psalms 50, verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. Right. That's why they come out with bold statements, manifest destiny. This is of God that we just come over and kill millions of people and take the land. But I will reprove thee. He what? I will reprove thee. The reproof is going on now. The man of sin is being revealed. That's the reproof that is talked about. Not your dumb Christian church. Come on. And set them in order before thine eyes. Right. So he's setting the, the Israelite man and woman in order before his eyes. With all his high power, witchcraft, and these snares and traps, we getting set in order in these last days. You want to say something, officer? Okay. So let's, let's keep it rock and rolling. Give me Micah chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh huh. Woe to them that devise iniquity. So the Bible says destruction unto them that devise sin. Man, this man works iniquity secretly. He encourages himself in the evil manner, what the scripture said. Come on. And worked evil upon their beds. Right, this, you know, when you in your bed, you tossing and turning. Especially this time of year, it's hot. You trying to get the AC running so you can go to sleep. This man said, oh, nah, I'm not flipping no covers to get no good sound sleep. I'm thinking about evil. Right. Come on. When the morning is light. Uh, so they, they get up. You, white folks get up early, too. What they get up early for? They practice it. Uh-huh. Because it is in the power of their hand. Right. They getting up early, rising early in the morning to practice evil. Read on. And they covet fields. They do what? They covet fields. America was a big field that this man coveted. 
Read. And take them by violence. That's why his whole voting system is a total fraud. How are you going to set up a quote-unquote democratic system based on uh, uh, the foundation that you stole a land that you set up as a democracy on? Uh, you stole it uh, and killed millions of people. Read. And houses and take them away. Uh-huh. So they oppress a man and his house, mm-hmm. even a man and his heritage. Right, and they not only they still landed and stole the heritage, you got your five dollar Indians. Hey, then did, did we just see Amalek say, "Well, if, if I don't take the house, somebody else gonna take right, it." Right, exactly. <laughs> and and not the, they got us over. We calling ourselves niggas, they over there the Yahudi. Right. Then this same man come up with identity theft, protect your identity. Come on, man, you can't make this stuff up, man. Life alert. Right. Come on, man. Let's go over to Habakkuk chapter 2. This dude is something else. Let's uh, give me Habakkuk 2 and 8 and uh, 9. The book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 8. Mm-hmm. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. Make no mistake. That's why he got a military base on every single land mass around the world. This man sets them. As soon as that thing touched down, you about to be spoiled, man. Come on. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Mm. Because of men's blood. Because what? Because of men's blood. Because when they touch down, they putting people to death all over the globe, man. Come on. And for the violence of the land. And the violence of this land. Of the city. And of all that dwell therein. Right. It's nothing but violence. You turn on the news. We marrying this man, killing all types. We killing our own selves like this man was out there killing people. Read. Woe to him that covet an evil covetousness to his house. Right. So the Bible said, you know, again, destruction is going to be this man that covet with the e- covetousness is already evil. But it's saying this covetousness was real evil cuz what he stole a man, oppressed a man's house and his heritage. He didn't just take your stuff. He didn't took it and took your damn identity. Read that he may set his nest on high. He calling himself God's chosen people. That's the setting the nest on high. I'm the chosen people of the Lord. Come on. That he may be delivered from the power of evil. Right. And he getting delivered straight to hell in that last day. You better believe that. That's the only deliverance for him. And we come up there to talk about can the white man be saved. We foolish as hell, man. Give me Revelation 17 and 1 about this man spoiled many nations. What he need to be saved from. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. Uh-huh. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven veils, and talked with me, saying Mm -hmm. unto me, come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. That's that woe, the judgment under that great whore, read, that sitteth upon many waters. Oh, that do what? That sitteth upon many waters. Go back to that Micah 2, man, so we can make that correlation. Is that 2 and 2? Go back to that real quick so they understand. This man has spoiled many nations. Let's go back so we can make that point. Micah chapter 2, verse 2. Uh huh. And they covet fields and take them by violence, and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, mm-hmm. even a man and his heritage. Right? Jump over to Habakkuk. That was Habakkuk that I wanted. My fault. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 8. Because thou has spoiled many nations. Right, because he has spoiled many nations. That's that, what we read in Revelations. This said, go back to Revelations 1. Revelation 17, verse 1. Uh Uh-huh. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven veils, and talked with me, saying unto me, come hither. Uh Uh-huh. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. The great whore, man. That sitteth upon many waters. Right, that's what we're reading about here in that Habakkuk 2 and 8. Go read Habakkuk 2 and 8 now so we, we can see the point. Habakkuk 2, verse 8. Because thou hast spoiled many nations through warfare, economic policy, outright oppression. Come on. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee Mm -hmm. because of men's blood and of the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that covet an evil covetousness. Right. Woe to him that covet the evil covetousness, man. Let's go ahead and um, play that video of the reservation. Let's play this video real quick. Them reservations, there's a bunch of videos. Out there. I want to play this just a little bit short clip, but them reservations are some horrible places to live, man. We only going to watch a little bit of the interview because it, it just makes me upset. I'm going to just be honest with you. Yeah, the, re- the reservations are horrible. I've been on reservations before, and uh, the reservations are terrible. You just see, you see, I mean, you think the drug, it looked like, you think the Baltimore looked like a third world country. 
go on a reservation, for real. Like drunk, uh, the drunkenness is super high. Um, you'd be amazed how many of the women on the reservation suffer rape. Super high rape. Um, it's, it's the the suicides, uh, dropping out of school. Like reservations are terrible. Right. Then and they uh, they and all jammed on top of each other and on top of that though, out in the middle of nowhere. Some of them. Now some of them are a little spread some out. Some of them, but, but for the most part, you you see a lot of you see a lot of trailer homes on uh on right. reservations too. A lot of them live in trailer homes. It's reservations not a nice place. And then you got and then you got dumb Jake talking about they got reparations. That's the five dollar Indians though. The ones that right, own like the, that the one. ones that own the the casinos and right, all that. Right, right, right. That, that's who got the money. It wasn't. It ain't real Gad who actually got the money. Hell no. Go ahead and play this video, man. Just a little bit of it. Reservation. Damnation. Bleak. Oppression. Small. Small. They're beautiful and sad at the same time. It's beautiful because you're surrounded That's by That's enough, man. You know they got to throw that up like in you. here, man. It's just, just killing me, man. But you'll be surprised, though. And he says small. They'd be out in the middle of nowhere, and it'd be like this little small reservation, man. That's some evil stuff, man. The, cra the crazy part, too, is like um, I know like the reservations out in California. The, uh, the police would only come through once a month. The sheriff would ride through once a month unless they were specifically called for an incident. They only walk, they only ride through there once a month. It's crazy. So yeah. it's just kind of like, you know, it's bad. It's a free-for-all, a lot of crime. Yeah, it is, man. Give me that uh, Isaiah 5 and 8, man, because it's the same thing that affects us when you type in these ghettos. Like, we pull up Cabrina Greens and all that foolishness. You know, they and even the day they got, you know, we got some of them high-rise uh, death towers over here, them apartments, like you know, like Judge Dredd. Do you seen the new Judge Dredd where they had like the? I saw a little bit of it. Right, they got like the apartment. They got it stacked up, and that thing ain't nothing but a damn kill zone, man. Yeah, crawling well, through the roof. Well, you know, a lot, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the gentrification going on now. They, they tearing the projects down, and they pushing the, uh, they pushing Jake out to the suburbs now. Right, and, right. And Esau is reclaiming the, the water, all the waterfront property. Right, of course. But let's get that though about this man right here in Isaiah five and eight. Isaiah. 5 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Woe unto them that join house to house. It's, the Bible says destruction unto this man that built these ghettos so you understand what's being said here. Come on. That lay field to field uh -huh. till there be no place mm -hmm. that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. Right. They telling you to get back in these cities and all that. All these other, these Edomites own all this land. And you know, we when we drove out to St. Louis, you looking at all this land, nobody out there and they talking about the earth overpopulated. This dude is the devil, man. This dude is the devil. Pull up that article in the City Journal. It should be all this. It's a City Journal under there. I mean, let's get that up real quick. Here we go. Let's blow that thing up. This, this roll down of horror stories. This talking about uh, uh, Cabrina Greens. Cabrini Greens, Chicago. I've been there. Yeah, go ahead and read that. Start from the top. For writers, it pays to be a contrarian. No, no, go down to horror stories. I don't know. We're just going to get to the, we're just going to get some of the meat. Uh, up, 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 up. It's the third paragraph. Horror stories. Where Legion. In 1970, snipers assassinated two Chicago cops who were working to build trust between the police department and project residents. After 11 homicides on the premises in early eight, 1981, Chicago Mayor Jane Biner moved into a Cabrina Green apartment for three weeks. Some political stunt. That's what that was. Come on. Seeking to bring local and national media attention to the ongoing chaos. Right. And they knew what they was on. That's why they, why do you think they call them the projects? Why, out of all of the, what kind of project is it? It's an experiment. That's exactly what it is. 
That's exactly what it is. You stack you stack a bunch of anything on top of one another. They're gonna bite and devour one another. I couldn't find it, but I you know they did it with lab uh, lab rats. Oh yeah, you don't have that one. No, I didn't oh, have. That's I a, that's a it's good hard one. to find a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's now. a good one. Them lab rats tore one another to pieces. Yeah, that 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 mess is evil. But you know we're gonna keep moving. Go, we're gonna go to this man and what what does he got today? So we covered the religion. We covered his policy, so now we're gonna go into witchcraft. That's your TV and entertainment. That's what that's what's got to hypnotize minds out here. Let's go to Matthew chapter twenty four, verse twenty four. Like you looking at weaponized military grade witchcraft when you look at that TV. I'm not even. That's that's exactly what it is. That's exactly. We think of witchcraft. We think about some hook nosed old lady boiling some chicken feet in a pot. Well, television programming. That's yeah, it, telling it, telling lies to your vision and programming your mind. Exactly. Matthew twenty four verse twenty four. Uh huh. For there shall arise false Christ mm -hmm. and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. Right. The great signs and wonders is his through his political system, his science, his religion, and all that gets conveyed through your TV and media for the most part. Read. In so much that if it were possible. They shall deceive the very elect. That stuff, if it wasn't for the Lord, with that small remnant, everybody would be deceived. And we're going to show you some stuff how this man gets down with that. And especially we be telling y'all sisters, because that TV got, a, got the sisters' minds hook, line, and sinker. You turn on the TV now, we got to turn that madness off. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter uh, 2. You want to take something off? Sir? Yeah, you got to do is walk through the neighborhoods. Like, our people always go, oh, you know, this is my style, you know. Why why, why you dress this way? Or why you, you know, why you, why you move this way? Everybody thinks that they have their own mind. But, I mean, just take the rap, the, the rap music, for instance, right? So, in the late 80s, I don't, some of you brothers know in the late '80s, everybody was you know it was public enemy. It was it was self destruction. You had right, self destruction. Right, right. You had the brand Nubians. You had public enemy. You had uh, you had a lot of positive you know black conscious type of music, right? And so within about two years, they did this whole switch, and then N.W.A. and all of these different gangster rap groups start coming out, and everybody took off the dashikis. And 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 the Africa medallions. Then everybody was gangsters. It just show you how the exactly. the minds just follow right behind the music. But everybody claims to have their own mind and be individual. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's give me that. We're gonna go through Thessalonians real quick. I'm on Second Thessalonians chapter two. We're gonna start at verse one. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that by our gathering together unto Him that ye be not soon shaken in mind. Right. We don't need to be shaken in the mind. And, and the shaking, a lot of that shaking comes from that damn TV. Come on. Or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word. Y'all a hate group. Nor by letter as from us, mm -hmm. that the day of Christ is at hand. Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive you. It by, said what? Let no man deceive you by any means. Mm -hmm. That the day shall, for that day shall not come except their there come a falling away first. Right. So the deception that Christ was talking about was not going to be at that time. It was going to be when we fell away. Go to Luke 21. Let's go to Luke 21. We're just going to get to the point in verse 24. What was that falling away? Because he said, because this is what he's talking about. We had our identity intact. We knew we was the Israelites. So now we fell away and we woke up as Negroes grown out of the cotton field in 1619. Luke 21. Verse 24. Uh-huh. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Read. And shall be led away captive into all nations. So that's when we fell away. We literally fell away by the sword, but the, the primary reason we fell away, we were led away captives as slaves. Come on. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. So now as we got led away as slaves, lost our identity, guess what? You got the Gentiles or the damn Edomite in the land today. Come on. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And they only over there for a certain amount of time before the land and the Lord put the eject button on them. So we got to endure to that day. So we already seeing a prophecy with our own eyes. So we fell away. That's why he's telling us, let's go back to that second Thessalonians, man, so we can uh, get the point of that. You want to hey, say something? Else? Yeah, let me get a uh, precept just for that real quick. Give me uh, Ezekiel 36 and 5 real quick. 
just to just to back up that you know that's heathens in the land. You know that's that's heathens in the land. They're gonna be there until Christ returns. The book of Ezekiel, chapter thirty six, verse five. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, the white man, which have appointed my land into their possession mm -hmm. with the joy of all their hearts. They did it and they was happy about it. Go ahead. With despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey and cast his people out. Go ahead. That's it. That's why I said, woe to him that covered with an evil covetousness, man. That's what that's going into. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's start at verse 3 again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. Mm -hmm. So we can't be deceived by any means. Come on. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. So the deception is letting you know it's going to be in these days that we woke up calling ourselves Negroes, thoughts, coons, or whatever. Come on. And that man of sin be revealed. The white man is getting revealed. That's who the man of sin is. Come on. The son of perdition. Right. The son of hell or destruction. That's what he is. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. This man opposes and exalts himself all above all that is called God. Come on. Or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. Showing himself that he is God. Wow. Give me First Timothy chapter uh, uh, 6, verse 20. Because this is how he, this how he uh, opposes God. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. Uh -huh. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. So that's to us. We got to keep that which is committed to our trust, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. Come on. Avoid and profane and vain babbling. Right, we're not going to be talking to no Edomite about the, the evolution theory or Darwinism or whatever, the Big Bang theory. This total foolishness. Come on. And oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Right. Those oppositions of science oppose what the Scriptures say. Like, it's a Big Bang theory. How can you even say that? Somebody had to be there to witness it. Right. And then whoever seen you, we see all types of explosions. The white man was blowing up it, stuff all over the world, right? Whoever seen at the end of the explosion, a Swiss watch was made. But out of the Big Bang there, you got all this complex life form and all this other stuff. Right. Total opposition of the Lord. Right, that's, and that's the key word in the scripture says in oppositions of science. Right. So a lot of people go, you know, I, I see people like on Twitter and stuff, and they're going, oh, you know, we believe the Bible, we don't believe science. It's not what the scripture's saying, okay? Right. Science, there is some science that is real, okay? Right. If you, if you stand on top of a building and step off, gravity's real, okay? Right. What it's saying is science that opposes the Bible. That's it. That's it. Go back to Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's read verse 4 again. Let's read on now. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, mm -hmm. or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Read. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. They, Christ repeated these things over and over. It's got to be repetitive because a lot of times we get lulled to sleep by this man's witchcraft. So that's why it's always reminded, be not deceived, be not deceived. Don't let nobody trick you. Don't get it twisted. It's all throughout the Bible in the New Testament because this man coming in, swinging them, singing them sweet lullabies. Like people are like, damn, I get to take my mask off, everything going back to normal. Now you talking about door-to-door -door, uh, medicine inoculations, man. So what you really have to protect is you have to protect, you got to protect your mind. That's it. Got to protect your mind. That's what he's trying to steal. Right. Read on. Verse 6. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. And the Lord had to hold this man back so this man could be revealed in his time. Today is his time, man. Come on. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. What the Romans was already putting in work. So that was the mystery of iniquity. That was the mystery of the man of sin. Paul is letting you know in the spirit, the man of sin already working. He didn't kill Christ, all the apostles and all that. Come on. Only he. Who now letteth will let. Meaning what? The Lord is allowing this man to reign and rule and terrorize the whole earth. Come on. Until he be taken out and of the he way. he's going to most certainly be taken out of the way forever. Read on. And then shall that wicked be revealed. So and then that wicked going to be revealed. The white man is going to be known as the wicked uh, of the earth. Come on. 
whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. So when when Christ come back, whatever nation you see totally get obliterated, that's the man of sin. That's what that's telling you. Come on. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Uh-huh. Even him. Even him. Whose coming is after the working of Satan. So that man that Satan is working with is going to be destroyed. That's what that's telling you. Come on. With all power and signs and lying wonder. And it says with all power. This man has got supreme power on this earth. Make no mistake about it. So if you want to fool around with this man, turn on that TV and get hypnotized. Read that again. He got what? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan uh -huh. with all power mm -hmm. and signs and lying wonders. That we covered the lying wonders and his opposition to signs. So this man's got supreme power on this earth to hypnotize the minds of the people. You keep fooling around with that man, his TV, his political system and all that. He just convinced the whole world to take a vaccine that was untested. Right. Come on, man. That's that's some heavy witchcraft right there. And you know what's crazy? It's actually against the Nuremberg uh, 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 trial. They had that thing at the Nazi Germany. Where it's, you can't even give out experimental vaccines on people. Come on. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness. Right. With all deceit of sin. That's what that's telling you. Sin is deceitful. Read. And them that perish. So that's talking about us. And them that perish. Read. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Why? Because our minds are too gummed up from verse, what is that? Verse 9. That they might be saved. Right. Because we're not going to be saved because what we think about. Man, a white man is God. Christianity, God loves everybody and all that. You hypnotize, man. And that, that and, and, and when it says they receive not the love of the truth, you have to realize that the Most High loved us. That's why he gave us his laws. Okay. And Me? for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Right. That's why when you talk to some of your family members, you're like, damn, it's like I'm talking to MSNBC. This dude is see this this dude's CNN. Program responses. That's it. Program response. God forbid you say something about Joe Biden, you an automatic Trump supporter. Then you say something about Trump. They don't even know what the category is. They just, just call you a damn Republican. Wait a minute. Toxic masculinity. Right. Toxic, all that. Toxic masculinity. You, right. Yeah. You are, you either that. You one of the foes, uh, isms, or whatever. They got you all preaching these hate, brother. That's You're preaching it. hate. Come on. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion mm -hmm. that they should believe a lie. Read. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. Because at the end of the day, they got pleasure in doing sin. That's all that is. They say, you know what? I'm going to be a good Christian because me being a Christian, I ain't got to do nothing different. That's all that's telling you. You want to get something, officer? All right, we'll keep going. Give me Revelation 2 and 13. Give me Revelation 2 and 13. Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. Mm -hmm. I know thy works. And where and where thou dwellest, mm -hmm. even where Satan's seat is. Best believe in America, you over here in Satan's seat. Come on. And thou holdest fast my name. Meaning what? Those in Satan's seat, we got to keep the commandments, man, near and dear to our hearts. Come on. And has not denied my faith, mm -hmm. even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr. Who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth? Right. Go read verse 12. Read verse 12 so we can get the context. Verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos. Right. right. So they was in Pergamos. That was in Rome. That was a city in Rome. They had a citadel set up there. And that's where they put out all their foolish policies and, and laws and all that and hypnotized the minds of the people. Just like America today. These things saith he which have the sharp sword with two edges. Right. That's Christ holding them scriptures. Come on. I know thy works mm -hmm. and where thou dwellest. Right. So the Lord know our works and where we live. Where do we live? Even where Satan's seat is. Right. So Babylon or another another name for the Satan's seat. And who is he sitting on here? Us. Come on. And thou holdest fast my name. Right. And we got to hold fast to the commandments. Read. And has not denied my faith. Uh-huh. Even in those days wherein Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was slain among you? Mean Where's what? We see a brother. He gave a shout out to a brother that was slain for holding fast his name. That's telling us here in these last days, some of us going to get slain for keeping the commandments. Come on. Where Satan dwelleth. Right. But it's best 
to be put to death, stand up for the Lord, then out there cheering on little Nas, uh, what little little Nas X tongue kissing the brother on stage. It's foolishness, man. Right, right. Let's stick in the theme with the Satan. Give me Nahum three and four, man. This is gonna tie back into Revelation seventeen too. And one, what we read. The book of Nahum, chapter 3, verse 4. Uh huh. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well favored harlot. Right. We see the well favored harlot as the, the Statue of Liberty. That host stand up there with the bright light shining. Give me your oppressed, your poor, and all that from all over the earth. So what? She can oppress them even more. Come on. The mistress of witchcraft. The what? The mistress of witchcraft. The mistress of witchcraft. Read on. That selleth nations through her whoredom. Right, running game on all the nations, man. Like, you just go over there with this, this garbage dollar that ain't got no backing. You go over there and say, look, your money's some garbage. Even though you got gold, diamond, silk, bauxite, and all these resources we need, your money's some trash. Give me your resources. We're going to send Halliburton over there to build all these factories, and right. you're going to owe us tens of trillions That's of dollars gonna give you that loan, you can you never, can never pay, pay back. back. Right. The devil, man. Come on. And families. Through her witchcraft. Right. And I, the fam is through the witchcraft. Let's see this witchcraft. Give me, I want that video on Operation Mockingbird. I want the first video. I want that one right there. And we're going to play that for uh, 225 up to 225. Then we're going to play the second one to see an example of it. Let's watch this. Through this man's witchcraft. Look what this man was doing in the 70s. People ain't even heard of the... Uh, the uh the, the the church committee. This is a uh dinner this is a uh Senator um Frank Church and he was exposing some foolishness going on. Watch this. I thought that it was a matter of uh, real concern that planted story is intended to serve a national purpose abroad, um, came home and were circulated here and believed here because uh, this would mean that the CIA could manipulate the news in the United States by channeling it through some foreign country. So we're looking pause. at that very carefully. Do you? That was all the way illegal up till 2013 when your ban your y'all man y'all's man Obama said, you know what? They've been operating illegal for 30 years. Let's go ahead and legalize it. Let's lift the ban on CIA propaganda being ran in America. People slept through it, don't even know what's going on. Hypnotized minds. Did y'all catch what, what, what was really just said? They saying they was manipulating the United States public by running fake stories through other countries. Back through the CIA. Go back to the video. Play the video. So you looking at CNN, that's straight CIA news. Come on by channeling it through some foreign country. And we're looking at that very carefully. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to a major circulation American journal? We do have people who submit pieces to other to American journals. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks. This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in executive session. Uh, at CBS, uh, we uh, had been contacted by the CIA. As a matter of fact, by the time I became the head of the whole news and public affairs operation in 1954, ships had been established, and I was told about them and asked if I'd carry on with them. We have quite a lot of detailed information, uh, and we will evaluate it, and we will include any um, evidence of wrongdoing or any evidence of impropriety in our final report and make recommendations. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to the national news services, AP and UPI? 
Well, again, I think we're getting into the kind of detail, Mr. Chairman, that I'd prefer to handle in executive right, session. So drop that video. Senator, so, do you think you... This, this, it, that's your fake news right there. That's your fake news. He was all mad at Trump for calling it fake news. Right. That was... Back in 1975, when the man said, look, when I came on board to CBS in 1954, the relationship was already established because they was running the weaponized propaganda in 1950. So Play it's just, the video. Well, let's get the other one. Watch it, this. It's just showing you that your, your, your news been manipulated since way back then. All that stuff literally comes down from the CIA. I'm going to tell you straight. And this is about to be the proof. Come on. The greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso, Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we, we are concerned, concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible. One-sided one news stories, stories plaguing, plaguing our, country. our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false False news, news has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same stories simply aren't true without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous. All right, we made our point. Go back to that name him three and four. Because you sitting down there in front of your TV and you think this, you think the white man is in the business of entertaining black people? Not like we really think this man is sitting up there. Yeah, I want these niggas to have. I mean, I want these people to have a good time. Complete mental manipulation. That's all he in. He all he. I need them to continue being foolish and destroyed, so I can continue my agenda, my reign of terror. Read Nahum three and four again. Nahum three verse four, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well favored harlot. Uh huh. The mistress of witchcraft. That's the mistress of witch. That was witchcraft right there. That's why I said it was weaponized witchcraft because the CIA is a military organization. So I'm not saying weaponized witchcraft to sound like I'm trying to be a, a, a comedian. That's what it is. Come on. That selleth nations through her whoredom. Right. And they set up what? Um, what is that? The Voice of America. It's a government agency it's based in D.C. They got them stations set up in all countries over the earth that take that foolishness to spin propaganda. Like it was a brother that was working. Uh, he uh, he was a brick mason, and he was from Ghana. He thought he was a Hamite, and uh, he was telling me about it. I said, so what's your experience been like when you came over here in America? He said, it ain't what it was like when I was over there. I said, brother, they sold you a bag of goods. And I said, I got some more bad news for you too, brother. You ain't an African. He was like, I am African. I said, well, answer two questions for me. I said, who do you live amongst? He said, black people. I said, okay, that's strike one. And I said, who you working with? Black people. I said, brother, no Hamite, no African coming over here laying bricks, brother. Use, use a Negro, man. Straight brick. The hey, people, the Africans made a serve with rigging in, in, in Egypt, man. I deal with a lot of Africans. Every African I know owns their own business. Exactly. Every one of them. Damn sure ain't gonna see no African laying no damn bricks. The, 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 the bottom rung of Africans you will ever see will be either working on cars in their own shop or they'll be doing hair if it's a female. But that's still working for yourself. I've been in construction for 20 years. I may have seen one African. And he may have been remnant. Ne I literally, I'm not even being funny. I've never seen a real African in construction. Dude, it's, I didn't mean to bust the, burst the brother's bubble, but said, brother, you ain't African. They got you. All right, give me Isaiah 47. More lies. The book of Isaiah 47, verse, verse 7. Nine. Start at verse 7. Verse 7. And thou sayest, I shall be a lady forever. Right, that's that well-favored harlot. So that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, uh -huh. neither didst thou remember the latter end of it. Right, because they believe in their own foolishness now. Come on. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasure, mm -hmm. that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. Right, they set themselves up as God's people and God's on the earth, read. I shall not sit as a widow, mm -hmm. neither shall I know the loss of children. Read. But these 
But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. Right. The judgment is coming in one day. One hour, really. Come on. The loss of children mm -hmm. and widowhood. Read. They shall come upon thee in their perfection. Right. The Lord is going to bring perfect destruction. That's why we got to get our minds right, folks. Come on. For the multitude of thy sorcery. It's, what? For the multitude of thy sorcery. Y'all saw the multitude of them sorcery. Them, them news readers, they, it's no such thing as real journalism. Those are just news readers. They come up on there. Anybody can go up in there that can read, that can do that. They act as they read the script. That's all it is. Y'all seen it? That was straight operation. All your news is straight Operation Mockingbird. That's what that hearing in 1975 was about that we played. With them running CIA stories, paid propaganda put out to the masses of the people. Hey, not to backtrack too much, but you know another re uh, another way you know that, that it's a difference between us and Africans? What's that? You ain't never seen Baba Tunde get shot in the street by the police. Hell no. Okay? Yeah, I mean... It's always it's always uh 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 Kamal Jackson. Right. Ho brother, hopefully you repent, brother. You ain't no damn African. Come on. And for the great abundance of thine enchantments. The great the Bible says the like if you got a great abundance of something, this dude got a great abundance of his enchantments. It come through the TV and the and the hip hop. Did you want to talk about that hip hop? Let bring that up. Finish this out. Yeah, you cause you was in that you was in that music. So you bring that out. Come on. Verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Right. That's why they say CNN is the most trusted source of news. Hey, you hear that? You hear the foolishness. Come on. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Right. They, don't nobody see us behind the curtain. Read on. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it have perverted thee. Right. The, the wisdom and knowledge, talking about their wisdom and knowledge and sin, has perverted their minds. Read. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Right, they now they didn't got away with so much evil that they think they the Lord. You bring that, you bring that out, man, about them stories, man. Well, just about the music. Um, like we was talking about back in the day when everything was positive, they actually had a uh, they actually had a council, and they called together a bunch of the uh, a bunch of the artists that was real popular at the time, like Public Enemy, like a, a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different of the top artists. And what they did was they had a uh, they had a meeting. This is some kind of private meeting. And uh, they were talking about the way they wanted to shift the music or steer the music. Okay, so at the same time, they were building what's called what's known as your industrial uh, uh, prison complex. Okay, so they wanted to change the music to influence the culture or influence a certain behaviors. Okay, so that's why you start to notice back in the day when nobody rap. Now people was doing drugs, but nobody was rapping about drugs until you heard Dope Man. Dope man, dope man, yeah, that's me. That was the first time you ever heard anybody rap about drugs like that openly. And then from there, just kind of, they just started steering it in a whole different direction. And that was to steer the culture to a, a, a criminal, to criminalize behavior, which was in turn going to take them right into the prison, which is what? It's modern slavery. That's all it is. That's, that's all it is. That's all it is. You know, it's, you, it, it, it's a lot to it. It go and it go a lot deeper. I mean, oh, like absolutely, absolutely. It, like if y'all really knew what was going on behind the scenes, like for instance, a lot of people don't know when they when they when they finish a record, okay, and they take it into mastering. Before it goes in, well, after it goes into mastering, they every major record label got this thing they call the prayer room. They take these records and they wicked as hell, and they pray over them, demonic prayers. That's in the records that you're listening to. There's all kind of things in there, different vibrations and all kind of stuff that they put into these records to move your spirit. Okay? They understand bass frequencies and how different bass frequencies open you up, open your spirit up to different things. It's, it's, they know how lower registers and bass open you up to certain things right. or connects with your low, what they call your lower self and how higher frequencies like um, yeah, like classical music. classical music and orchestra music. What is that, 440 hertz? But that's hertz in the way. scriptures. Right. That, that, it's a certain hertz pattern that's actually good for it. This man got this digital stuff that's operating on a, on a frequency level. Well, think that, about that, uh, witchcraft. King David playing, uh, right. what was it? Right, playing right. music to get the spirits off of... Uh, was it uh, Saul? Right. Right. So, I mean, they know all of this stuff. So, so. if you got music that Heavy can get crab. spirits off of you, it's obviously music that's going to put spirits on you. That's the point. That's the witchcraft. Go back to Nahum 3. 
We keep sleeping on this man and, and thinking he out here doing stuff to keep us entertained and have us out here hee ha ha. He not in the business of entertaining. Nahum 3 and 5. Nahum chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord is against this man. Understand that. Come on. And I will discover thy skirts upon thy face. Right. This man, this man is being revealed. That's the man of sin being revealed. Read on. And I will show the nations thy nakedness. Right. Everybody looking like, yo, that country wicked as hell. It's all, they all starting to come together and see, man, this place has been causing havoc on the earth for years. Come on. And the kingdoms thy shame. Right. Go to Isaiah 47. Read 2 and 3. Like this man's nakedness is getting revealed. This this well favored harlot, because in order to know that it's a harlot, you know the dress got to get pulled up. So the Lord pulling pulling up the dress, and everybody's seeing. Mm. Read that Isaiah forty seven verse two. Mm -hmm. Take the millstone and grind meal. Mm -hmm. Uncover thy locks. Mm. Make bare the leg. Right. Uncover the head. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Uh oh. Now you just. That's just over process time. But at first it was the legs. People were like, man, this place is evil. But now the voices are getting louder. Now it's up to the thigh. Come on. Pass over the rivers. So now you got to imagine a, 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 a woman in a dress passing over the river. She got the dress, depending on the height of the river, the, the dress might be up here. Come on. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. It said what? Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Right. They're like, damn, ooh, they looking like, that's a hoe right there. Stuff stretched out, all manners of evil. Come on. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. The, the shame of this place going to be seen. You got a brother uh, lap dancing on the devil. A brother. What's amazing to me you is how. figure that be some what's shit Marilyn me, Manson would do. What's amazing to me is how people don't see this whole thing, like this LGBT movement. How it's going straight toward pedophilia. And nobody can see this thing except the Israelites. It's so obvious what they're doing and oh, the they way they're moving. Your kids. Just like if you just look at the laws that they change and how they keep uh, decreasing the age of consent. Right. When they talking about your child don't need your consent to get a vaccine, they not worried about no vaccine. They they saying the child is a uh, can make his own decision. Lil Nas X is getting. We just saw uh, oh, Officer Nick posted an uh, article this morning that shows that they're gonna be passing out they're gonna be passing out condoms to ten year olds. 10 years old and older in the elementary schools to cut down on HIV. And you Free know condoms and you to know 10 year olds. You know what's evil about that? The studies came out after they introduced their sex ed and, and dare program that sex increase and drug use increase. Because when you come in and you don't know nothing about no damn uh, uh, K2 and, and uh, uh, ketamine and all these other drugs, you get up and they teach you about all the drugs, how to cook them, how to use yep. them, and all that. Most that kids, all that's the power suggestion. Most kids got introduced to drugs by the D.A.R.E. program. Straight up. That's why this man, he already know. That's predictive programming. Go back to finish that out in, uh, in uh, Isaiah 47 and 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Mm -hmm. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. Mm. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. So when Christ coming back, he's smashing up all this garbage, man. All foolishness. Let's go back to Nahum 3 and 6. Nahum chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And I will cast abomin and I will cast abominable filth upon thee mm. and make thee foul. And what? And make thee foul. Mm. And will set thee as a grazing stock. As a gazing stock. Meaning people are gonna be looking at this vile, like you talking about this pedophile. People are like, what the hell is going on over there in America? Let's get it. Let's see who's going to be rolling out this vile agenda. Y'all already know what I want. I want Isaiah 32 and 5. Isaiah 32, verse 5. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. Right. So the Lord is already letting you know, and particularly for our sisters, because this is going to tell you whose minds this liberal agenda got hypnotized. Read it again. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. So the, the villainy is going to be coming out through a particular, even though they all wicked, but the Lord has given you a clue. The wickedness is going to be pushed by this liberal party, known as the Democrats or the progressives. Come on. No, the churl said to be bountiful. Churl is a peasant. This man is the basis man on the earth. Job said he wouldn't let his, this man ain't fit to be amongst his dogs, man. 
This base man is going to be known for what he is because people think, man, they think about the white man. They think about spotlights and glam and money and fame. No, he's going to be known as the peasant and the vile person, man. Read on. For the vile person shall speak villainy. Right. Putting uh, men on on boys and girls is total villainy. I tell you what. Has anybody here ever watched, by show of hands real quick, has anybody here ever watched Game of Thrones? Okay. That's some real Edomites right there, ain't it? Dude, that, I'm telling you, if you ain't never seen it, we man, that's that's how they that's how they really are right there. That's Edomites. Damn, come on. For the vile person shall speak villainy, mm-hmm. and his heart will work iniquity, sin, to practice hypocrisy. Right? They tell you that this all progressive. It's all about love. As soon as you say, "Hey, I don't agree with that," they be cussing you out. They're the most evil damn people too. Read on. And to utter error against the Lord. Men with men, women with women, men with little boys, that's error against the Lord, man. Come on. To make empty the soul of the hungry. Right. Our, our souls is empty. That's why we got to go back and get uh, uh, allegedly get fed every four years by voting for these clowns. Come on. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Right. That's why our community is getting worse and worse. That's the valley of dry bones there. We just so dehydrated, we just dry bones. You look at Baltimore, it's been ran by these liberals for the past 60 years. Well, look what we're dealing with in Baltimore. Come on. The instruments also of the churl are evil. So his political affiliation, his policies, they all evil. Mass incarceration, all these things is what this man set up. That's the villainy. Come on. He deviseth mm-hmm. wicked devices to destroy the poor. With lying words. Like he say Planned Parenthood is about oh, women's oh, health. You in the spirit. I was just about to say it. How the hell is it about, what is so healthy about exterminating babies and obliterating the sisters a uh, uh, means to produce babies? Come on. Even when the need is speaketh right. Right. You say, you know, man, we need better drinking water and things like that. You know, he just come up with the thing. Matter of fact, look it up. I'm going to show you about, about y'all man. With didn't the drinking just, water. Hey, well, Look they, up Obama. Uh, act, he act like he drank the water when he went up to Flint, Michigan. Oh, now. yeah. And they was pissed off up there. You know what's crazy? Detroit, Michigan got a brand new, don't they got a brand new football stadium or, or basketball stadium? They got a new stadium, but the water still messed up. Right. Look at this. Look at this brother take this fake. We're going to keep read that verse again. Because everybody, like, oh, this brother, he going to do this and he going to do that. People was just out here crying in the streets for this brother. Didn't see the setup coming. This brother didn't even drink one. He just put the word up to us. Let's read that scripture again. Verse 7. The instruments also of the churl are evil. Mm-hmm. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor mm-hmm. with lying words. Even when the needy speaketh right. Right. They were like, we need clean water. Everybody need clean water, man. You got it? Now I'm going to see this dude with, with this act. This is another actor right there. And he took black people to the hoop. Because Negroes wouldn't talk about no damn transgenders before he got in. He may be in a, 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 a homo <laughs> cool. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of, too? No child left behind. Right. Okay, they tell you, oh, no child left behind. And then they just start taking the kids and pushing them through, pushing them through grades, and they couldn't even read. No child left behind. But you, you graduate middle school and Literally can't read. Literally the opposite. Today, Barack Obama gave the good housekeeping seal of the president to the troubled waters of Flint, Michigan. And Jerika Duncan is there. Can, can I get some water? Before a crowd of a thousand. I really did need a glass of water. This is not a stunt. President Obama took a sip of Flint's filtered hey, tap look, water. That's enough. That wasn't the one. He had a private meeting with cares. them. It was even worse. Sip of Flint's filtered tap water. That brother, that's right there. That is the, the destroyer the poor with lying words. You know damn well you didn't drink that water. Hey, wait, that's like uh that's like your boy Bill Gates out there with the little the machine that turned the uh it turned the old waste into clean drinking water. Did you? Th- he did. Th- he literally did the same thing. Damn. Same thing. Fake this, drank the water. Right. It's like the fake COVID shots. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah, they're giving COVID shots with no needles. Not on that, but a lot of them, even what they gave the people, a lot of them, quote unquote, uh, I say vaccines, they were saline in them because of the ones that getting putting people to death. They couldn't have everybody getting put to death. Keep reading on that. Reverse. Uh, reverse eight. Verse eight. But the liberal deviseth liberal things, mm-hmm. and by liberal things shall he stand. Meaning what? The liberal just meaning they open for everything. They just took the took the brakes off the freight train going down the hill. 
Come on. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. You see who they targeting? That's y'all over there. Y'all in the war. He said, y'all sisters better wake up. You women that are at ease because what? The liberal with his lying words is uh, speaking to our sisters. Come on. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Uh Uh-huh. Give ear unto my speech. Right. So that's the speech we got to give. Our, that's the speech our sisters got to get their ear unto. Not talking about, uh, you know, what Joe Biden said or my girl Kamala's in the White House now. No. Uh-uh. Leave that alone. Give me Ephesians 2. So we're going to jump into the solutions, man. This is this the whole point of this. So we laid out some of the things that this man has, his religion, his uh, uh, policy, and his witchcraft. So now we got to get... The, the weapons of our warfare. Matter of fact, let's start with that. Give me that in 2 Corinthians. Was that 2 Corinthians 10? Is it 10? No, I get that confused. 10 or 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. There we go. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, uh-huh. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Right. The Bible is mighty through God to pulling down the strongholds. So when we saw all that weaponized witchcraft on, on that TV, from the Operation Mockingbird to them rolling out all that fake news you see today. That stuff right there, that stronghold getting tore down. Read it again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, uh-huh. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Read. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. That's this man, his, when the, the scripture said his heart is deep and, and he opposed with, the, with his fake science. The scriptures say... Cast all that foolishness down, man. Come on. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Right, so all them foolish thoughts that got implanted in our mind, the Bible is mighty to bring them things under captivity to the obedience of Christ. You want to go ahead? Yeah, nah, I'm just going to go to a script that show that uh, how how we going to get that done. Right. Look at that Joshua 1 and 8. Yeah, there you go. You in Let's the spirit. One of my favorite scriptures right here. Very important, especially especially for uh, brothers and sisters first coming into the truth. It's important for everybody, but this is your this got to be your mindset when you come into the truth, and you you got to meditate on these scriptures. Go ahead, Joshua chapter one verse eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of thine heart. That means it's supposed out, out of out of thy mouth. That means it's supposed to be your conversation. Go ahead. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now that don't mean you sitting around with your legs crossed doing the Doing, do, <laughs> doing this right here. That means a good thing to do is get up in the morning and, and read some scriptures, and now you got something to think about that day. You got something to meditate on going throughout your day. Go ahead. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Mm-hmm. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In this truth. That's it. All praises. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 2. Mm-hmm. Wherein, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world. Right, all of us did. And who was the course set by the white man? Through what? His foolishness, man, his media, his entertainment, his, his uh, demonic churches. Read. According to the prince of the power of the air. Right. The air, this man is the air, this dude is all over the place. He's literally in the air with his jets and over the airways with his witchcraft. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Uh huh. That's Among- the son of perdition. And I people that follow this man. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, now jump to um Titus chapter three. Read three and four. The book of Titus. Chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged women likewise. I mean 3, sorry, 3, 3 and 4. Titus 3, verse 3. And we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Right, because what? We was walking to the course of this world. We was walking in foolishness. Disobedient. Mm -hmm. Deceived. Deceived. And we already see one of the main means of deception, or some of the main means of deception, I should say. Come on. Serving diverse lusts and pleasures. Right, because each one of those means of deception comes with a particular lust. Living in malice and envy. Living in malice. We famous for that. Read. Hateful and hating one another. Right. We the first ones to hate on one another. See a brother doing good? Well, that's some that's that's some of them things that the white man searched out when he did that right. diligent search. Right. So they know what to put into those TV programs that's going to spark our lust, too. Right. Crab in the barrel. Is that it on that? That's verse 2. 
That was verse 4? Verse 4. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, uh -huh. toward men appeared. Mm. Verse 5. That's it. Give me Romans 12 and 2. Give me Romans 12 and 2. So the kindness and love of the Lord appeared. So what? To, to, to get our feet moving in the right direction. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And be not conformed to this world. It says be not conformed to this world. So in order to not be conforming to what? We got to pull ourselves out of these things. We got to uh, remove ourselves from this man and his evil devices. Read. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind uh -huh. that ye may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Right. So we got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Meaning what? We got to do something different. If we were sitting in front of the TV in, in, or in the church or in this political system, we got to come out of that. Give me Psalms 19 and 7. Because this is the only way that's going to renew our minds. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Mm-hmm. The law of the Lord is perfect. So the laws of God is perfect. Thou should not kill. Thou should not steal. Uh, marriage is honorable. Thou should not covet. Thou, uh, charity think of no evil. Those are perfect laws in the Bible. Come on. Converting the soul. So the laws of God changes us from Negroes and Israelites. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. So everything in this Bible is going to come to pass, whether you believe it or not. Read. Making wise the simple. Because we all, like we read in Titus, we all were foolish before we came into this walk. So now we're walking in the wisdom. We're walking in the wisdom. Give me that in um, uh, Deuteronomy 4. Is that what I want? This should be your wisdom in the sight of the nation. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's it. Because when they look when they look at Nicki Minaj and Little Kim and Cardi B and uh, Little Nas X, are they sitting around saying, "Damn, these people are so wise"? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They just fall. Like I was looking at them two devils when they was in interviewing Juvenile with the vax the thing up. Just the smug look on they they was just looking at him like, "Nigga, you so dumb." Like. Get the interview. Like, you just got to see they face this condescending look, man. That thing just, read, read the scripture. Read the scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. Uh -huh. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. So the commandments is our wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nation. The problem is when they look at us, the whiz is silent. It's just dumb in the sight of the nations. That's what's going on, and that's also that astonishment when you right when they see, when they driving through our neighborhoods and they see they see people out there covered from head to toe in tattoos and green and purple and yellow hair and just this, this it, that's really that astonishment that is talking about in uh, Deuteronomy twenty eight thirty seven. It's like how do these people live like this? They out here selling drugs to their own people. Right. They are killing each other. Look at their neighborhoods. Doors falling off the hinges, broken windows, and we just out there just just in it. Right. And like it's normal. You know, that's, that's called a trip to the zoo. Read, read that again. Keep therefore and do them. For these, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Uh -huh. Which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Right. So that's what, they, that's what we want them to say when they look at us. Well, we what? Uh, the walk in law. We are the law. Read. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them uh -huh. as the Lord our God mm. is in all things that we call upon him for? What? For the Lord our God, for the Lord our God is nigh upon all things that we call upon him for. Uh huh. So we're not calling for uh, stimulus checks. We call them for the Lord, man. That's what that's going into. That's our, so we got to get back to keeping the commandments because that's our wisdom in the sight of the nation. So we're not out here getting put to sleep. You, you know what else something? that goes into when it talks about the wisdom in the sight of the nations? When you read that First Kings 10, 1 through 6, when uh, Sheba came to visit Solomon. Right. How amazed she was and how in order everything was. And that was the scripture what, for the sisters that posted that thing up to the pictures, though. That was Queen Sheba that fell over. I seen some right. sisters had some other scriptures in there, but no, that was okay. Queen Sheba up in there that seen that. Y'all sisters know what I'm talking about, that photo? That was Queen Sheba that, that, 
that the spirit left her when she saw the, the just the everything that was going on. That's how in order we were. Mm -hmm. We got to so get back crazy. to that. Exactly. And we're going to get back to that level. Understand that. You, you know, starting off small, but we, we growing. You know, you look at the nation. But let's give me give me numbers 23 and 23 real quick because it go back to what Officer Kalai brought out about Joshua 1 and 8. So when we meditating on the law, this, was, this is going to be the result. We're not going to have to worry about getting uh, uh, hooked by the damn TV or by some damn political ad or some stupid movement. Black Lives Matter when it's ran by a, a, a white lesbian and funded by a, a, a old satanic white man that collaborated with the Nazis. Fat, fat black less bounce. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> your boy. Yeah, yeah. He's hilarious, man. <laughs> I, I can't he said, do that, brother. So, that so, brother. So you agree with fat black less bounce? Mm. <laughs> that brother is a. Uh, I'm. I'm just. Man. All right. Let's read that, man. Numbers 23, verse 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what have God wrought? Right. That's, that's what we read about the elect in the day. They come like, damn, they not, damn, they getting married. The, the, uh, the women that we created, this character of a black woman, they not, uh, they not identifying with that by running a man out the house. They're going to be confused when they see sisters in order. They're going to see brothers pulling their pants up, getting married. Now, what is the Lord doing? The witchcraft ain't working, but we can't feed these stereotypes anymore. We got to remove ourselves out of niggerdom and come back, what, to being the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Let me get a script. Uh, oh, yeah, go get ahead. That, get out. that Proverbs 12, 26 real quick. There's something else we got to make sure we taking heed to. Go ahead and read that when you got it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. But the way of the wicked seduceth them. So as we come back to keeping these commandments, we got to make sure that we keep in godly company also. Because more than likely, you're not going to persuade them to keep the commandments. They're going to pull you back into your old wicked life. Okay? One more. Let me get us to Rock 27 and 12. You know, because we're coming to this truth, but you're still trying to deal with your family in the world. But, you know, we got to keep these commandments, and it's going to tell us how we should be dealing with them. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet. That's your family and friends that's not keeping the commandments. Go ahead. Observe the time. Watch how much time you're around those people. But be continually among men of understanding. Mm -hmm. That's your family that's keeping the commandments. That's your, your Israelite family. Go ahead. The discourse of fools is irksome. But after a while when you're around these people, man. It says the discourse of fools, the conversation of people that don't keep God's laws, it get on your nerves. Because it's either about a nigga slammed, I mean, a, a brother slammed on the basketball, or a brother's talking about how big some sister's butt is that that's walked it. past. Literally, that's all Just brothers is talking about. Barbershop talk. Read on. And their sport is in the wantonness of sin. Everything come out of their mouth is sin. Damn. All right, let's give me 1 Corinthians 15. They go right on that. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 and 34. You right though. You get around. You hear some of that coon talk. It's just like dog. It's like you back on the plantation. First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse thirty three. Be not deceived. What? Be not deceived. Don't get put to sleep by MSNBC, Fox News, man. Come on. Evil communication corrupt good manners. What the Lord say about them? Them news networks. Evil communication corrupt good manners. There you go. Now you now you back being a Democrat or Republican. You've been corrupted, man. Come on. Awake to righteousness. It says, do what? Awake to righteousness. In, in order to make that statement, somebody gotta be asleep. We gotta wake the hell up. Recognize we in a damn war. Come on. And sin not. Uh-huh. For some have not the knowledge of God. Mm. I speak this to your shame. Right. We don't want to be them shameful brothers that don't have the knowledge of God. We don't, we, we so unknowledgeable, we don't even realize we're in the middle of a damn war. That's not the spirit to be in. Give me Romans 13 and 11. Romans 13, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And that, knowing the time. It says what? And that, knowing the time. In order to know the time, we got to be rehearsing what Christ said. Watch and pray. 
That's what we gotta be doing. You ain't gonna know the damn. You ain't gonna know nothing about no time if you're not looking. You don't have a clue as to what's going on. Your conversation talking about uh, basketball wives of Atlanta. Come on, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Right. You looking at? I don't know about y'all. I I can say this. Over the last this last year, things just went all the way down here. You thought it was bad four years ago. This thing, the next, this rocket fuel on this garbage now. Is that it on that? For now, is our salvation nearer than we believe? Right. You look at the news now. You just turn on some of the stuff going on across the earth now. <laughs> Who know about what's going on in South Africa right now? That thing literally looked like something out of the walking dead. It's total lawlessness. Why you read that about that in Ezra, man desiring to go to city. Men running up a house, no regards for borders and all that. If y'all don't know, y'all need to see what's going on over there. That's why Christ said, watch and pray. It's, these signs ain't going to be in your front. Like, things might be sweet over here. All over the world, South Africa literally is descended into hell. All right, give me um, Ephesians chapter 6. Is that what I want? I think I may have wrote the wrong one. No, Ephesians chapter 5. Sorry about that. Yes. Verse 6. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Right. The, the, read that again. Let no man deceive you with vain words. So don't be deceived by anything a pastor say. What's on that foolish TV? What you hear about out some damn politician mouth with vain words, man? Come on. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Right, because of us being seduced by vain words, the wrath of God is coming, man. Read. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. What did Paul say? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Meaning don't be on the business in the Christ when he come back. Come on. For ye... We're sometimes darkness. Right. So we were sometimes a darkness. We read, he said the same thing in Titus. He said the same thing back earlier in Ephesians. Come on. But now are ye light in the Lord. Right. So now he's, he, a lot of times we think Paul's speaking to people outside the body. No, he writing his letters to the brothers and sisters in the church. Mm -hmm. Come on. Walk as children of light. Right. So he said, but now you in light walk as children in light, meaning conduct yourself in the commandments of God. Read. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Right. So he already let you know what the fruits of the Spirit is. Come on. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Right. So we know what the fruits of the Spirit is that's acceptable unto the Lord. And have no, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Right. Officer Kalai, Officer Kalai pulled that out about what? When you're among the indiscreet, deserve the time. Observe the time because what? The, uh, what does it say about the wicked um, seduce of the righteous? Yeah, they're right. going to seduce you. They're going to get you back into your old ways. Right. Finish that out. But rather reprove them. Mm -hmm. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Mm. But all these, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Right. So, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. So, all these things that we thought was right get corrected by the laws of God. Come on. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Uh, so the scriptures, the law is going to manifest all wickedness and foolishness. Read on. Last uh, uh, verse on this. Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest. You see that? Awake you that sleep. How did we get put to sleep? It started in slavery and then they just comatose us with the TV. Read on. And arise from the dead. And do what? And arise from the dead. Let you know we was all in a dead estate before we came into this truth. Come on. And Christ shall give thee light. Right. Christ is going to give us the light, the understanding. Go ahead, officer. Hey, jump back up to verse 6 real quick. Verse 6. Uh-huh. Let no man deceive you with vain words. That's what I want right there. So it says, let no man deceive you with vain words. These vain words, like the officer brought out, it's coming from your politicians. It's coming from your celebrities. Real quick, give me a... Uh, Get me uh, Proverbs 28 and verse 19, because we got to stay focused. You know, when you all day on social media, watching these, uh, you know, Housewives of Atlanta and all these programs, I don't even know what, what's out now, Love and Hip Hop and all these different shows. Okay, you following after the, the scriptures call them vain persons. Read that. 19, 28, 19. Proverbs 
28, verse 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. So the scripture is saying, stay focused on your work and you're not going to want for nothing. You're going to be all right. Okay, you're not, when the, when the, when the drought come, your pantry going to be full. Go ahead. But he that followeth after vain persons. But the sister that's sitting up watching Love and Hip Hop all day or the brother that's on, on Facebook watching twerk videos. Go ahead. Shall have poverty enough. Going to be broke as hell and begging for brothers to help you. That's it. But that, that's what it's talking about. Don't follow on vain persons. That's talking about your celebrities. Right. It's talking about your, you know, your, your, your TV personalities and mm -hmm. your, your politicians and all that. The scriptures say it's not good to follow them. Right. You in the spirit with that. So let's see who you should be. Let's go ahead. Give me Sirach, chapter 6. Let's read verse 32. And we're going to read on down to verse 37. Just to back that up, what the officer said. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 32. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. Mm -hmm. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. Right. So it said, if you're willing, you're going to be taught. And if you apply your mind, meaning what? Meditating on the laws of God. That's what apply your mind means. Keeping the commandments. Come on. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. Mm -hmm. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Mm -hmm. Stand in the multitude of the elders. Right. So it's a stand in the multitude of elders. Not amongst foolish politicians or the LGBT or the BLM. Don't stand amongst them. Stand in the multitude of elders that do what? Read on. And cleave unto him that is wise. Right. Because there's no wisdom out there, man. Two men together. Where the hell is the wisdom in that? Read. Be willing to hear every godly discourse. It says do what? Be willing to hear every godly discourse. That's what you want to hear. You don't want to hear anything from Joe Biden, what he's going to promise you to do. It's all vain lies. Come on. All praises, too. That's why the brothers and sisters here tonight, too. Right. All praises. And let not the parables of understanding escape thee. Right. Come on. And if thou seest a man of understanding. So if you see a man that's learned in the scriptures, read. Get thee betimes unto him. Right. You want to draw yourself close to him. Not some damn brother that could dunk a basketball. And let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Right. So you got to be there what? So you can get that wisdom. Come on. Let thy mind be upon the ordinance of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And meditate continually in his commandments. Right. That's what officer brought out in Joshua 1 and 8. He shall establish thine heart. Right, so the Lord is going to establish our heart because at, at the end of the day, this thing is a war for your minds, brothers and sisters, and, and chiefly you sisters, because the same spirit that seduced y'all back in the Garden of Eden is the same thing here. But it's a war for all our minds. But y'all are the primary target. Understand that thing. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just about what you were saying about getting wisdom. Uh, let me get uh, let me get to Rock 38 and 24 real quick. The scriptures talks about that, about, about getting wisdom and what you got to do, the, the sacrifices you got to make in order to get wisdom. Go ahead, read it when you got it. 38-24. The book of Sirach, chapter 38, verse 24. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. That means in order to get wisdom, you got to make time to study. Go ahead. And he that have little business shall become wise. That means you can't always be concerned with work. Now, we commanded to work, but you can't be so, so obsessed with making money that you don't take time to study. You know, brothers had two, three jobs. It's like when you're studying. You got you to gotta make time to study. Go ahead. Verse 25. Verse 25. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow? The plow is work. How can you get wisdom if you're always working? Go ahead. And that glorifieth in the God. Mm -hmm. you, you happy about your work. That's all you talk about. You get off work and you're still talking about work. Go ahead. That driveth oxen and mm -hmm. is occupied in their labors. And whose talk is in of bullocks. That's what I said. You get off and you talk. When you get here on the Sabbath, you shouldn't be talking about your work. Now, you might say, you know, yeah, how was your week, brother? Oh, I had a hard week. Okay, but now let's, let's forget all that. Let's leave all that behind and let's get into the Sabbath day. You know what I'm saying? Even when you get off work, leave the job at the job. You know how they used to tell you when you go to work, they say, look, don't bring, don't bring home to the job. Well, guess what? Don't bring jo the job home either. Right. Leave the job there. And when you get home, now it's time, man, it's time to get into your kids and into your wife and into the scriptures. That's it. Let's go to Proverbs. Back that up some more. Give me Proverbs chapter 4. Let's start at verse 20. So let's hurry up and go through this.
the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 20. Mm -hmm. My son, attend to my words, mm -hmm. incline thine ear unto my sayings. So that means what? In order to do that, you can't be on a job all day. Or you can't, you can't listen to Cardi B and be in the scriptures at the same time. That don't work. Come on. Let them not depart from thy eyes. It said what? Let them not depart from thine eyes. Right, man. You can't watch uh, Housewives of Atlanta and, and go and, and, and then read Proverbs 31. Come on. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Uh-huh. For they are life unto those that find them. Right, because remember what we read that we were once in a dead estate. So now the Lord gave us all the law. Let's remain alive. Let's not be the walking dead, family. Come on. And health to all their flesh. Right, and we know the scriptures give us health. It even governs how we eat. It the scripture, uh, Paul said, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Bible teaches temperance. I, I can't eat fried chicken three days, uh, three times a day, in other words. Come on. Verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, mm -hmm. for out of it are the issues of life. Right, so as what we read about the brother working all day, that's all that's on his mind. That's all that's going to come out of his mouth. As a man, thank you. Right, give me that in Proverbs 23 and 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right, so... What we gotta, what we want to start thinking in our minds that we are the children of Israel. We are the walking light. We are no longer dead. So we gotta read and speak and believe those things in order to what do those actions because we've been doing dead people works for years. Some of us 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. We gotta, uh, we gotta awake the righteousness. What come out of the dead or the comatose state? So that's what that's going into. Give me Sirach nine and fifteen. Because you can't talk to Shaniqua on a job, man, about uh, baby mama drama and what happened on The the View or uh, what's, the, what's the show that sisters be watching? It's a show that sisters be watching. No, nah, man. This, this is them or th us? What? This is us? Right. They all, they all like, no, nah, I only watching none of that. Right, that, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. They go from my Lord and the congregation to my nigga at the house. Let's go ahead, read that Sirach 9 and 15. Ecclesiasticus chapter 9, verse 15. Let thy talk be with the wise. So, brothers and sisters, our talk got to be with the wise. We got to be, we can't speak foolish things and all manners of evil because it's going to corrupt us as we read evil communication corrupt good manners. Come on. And all thy communication in the law of the most high. Meaning what? That's what governs our speech. I can't be on the job at the water cooler talking about, damn, you see shorty, shorty fat. Blah. <laughs> they be like, brother, what the hell's wrong with you? That's not... That's not the conversations we should be having when we come into this truth. Give me Malachi 3.16. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Uh-huh. Then they that fear the Lord speak. Then they that what? And then they that fear the Lord. Did what? Speak often one to another. Do you see that? And the Lord making it so easy in these last days. You got cell phones. Some, you don't hear from some brothers and sisters all damn week. You know how hard it was to communicate in them times of Malachi? You was either walking or riding a horseback. To go visit your neighbor may have been an hour or two. We could just call somebody up. Guess what? You look at people's cell phone activity or call them up, voicemail. That's all you get. Read that again from the top. Then they that fear the Lord speak often one to another. So that's a way to determine your level of fear. Who are you communicating with? And this is going to show you how powerful this thing is. Read. And the Lord hearkened. And the what? And the Lord hearkened. Because what? As we read in Sirach 9 and 15, their communication, it said, what at the bottom of that? I'm going to read that. It, said, it says, and let thy, converse, let thy communication be in the law of the Most High. Come on. And heard it. Uh-huh. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. Mm. And that thought upon his name. So it's going to be books in the, in the kingdom like these brothers and these sisters Look at these godly conversations, like how we reading about all the stuff in the Bible. That'll be your conversations written there in the heavens, man. Give me that in uh, uh, and that's, Philippians that, that three also, twenty. That's also counsel, right? That's also counsel. Absolutely. When you on the phone talking back and forth with brothers and Absolutely. sisters about the scriptures. That's counsel. That's iron sharp with iron. That's the whole let me, thing. Let me get a scripture real quick. Go ahead, bring that Proverbs up real quick. 11, Proverbs eleven fourteen. 
Proverbs eleven fourteen, real quick. Read it when you got it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. Mm -hmm. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So it's safety in applying Malachi 3.16. It's safety in that they right. keep it, it'll keep it from going off. Right. So when you're having them thoughts that, you know, you shouldn't be thinking, you know, when, you, when, you, when, when that old man is tugging at you. Like, like people say you got um, to kill the old man. Right. I'm going to let you in on a secret. You can't kill him. But you, gotta be, you can bury him. Your job is to keep him in the coffin. Right. Okay, because he's cut for the rest of your life. He's going to be fighting, scratching, trying to get up out of the coffin. And the scriptures say two is better than one. That, that, exactly. Depending on how strong that old Negro was, you might, especially if he had a legion on him, right. you might need to be communicating with multiple brothers and sisters to keep that brother at bay. Let's read that in uh, Philippians 3 and 20. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Because Paul, uh, you know, Paul was quoting something here in an indirect way. Read that. For our conversation is in heaven. So we already read the the the, the Lord said in Malachi three. Read Malachi three sixteen again, real quick. Just hold that real quick. And let's go. You know, tying in that Sirach nine and fifteen as well. Malachi chapter three verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And, and the, the Lord did what? And the Lord hearkened and heard it. The Lord is up in the heavens, man. Come on. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. Right now, go back to Philippians 3 and 20. So our conversations in the heavens and we speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom or the heaven of God or the kingdom of heaven coming on the earth when we speak in that righteous communication. Don't make no mistake about it. Them righteous communications going out disrupting the signal out here, man. Read that. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. For our conversations is in heaven. Mm -hmm. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So that's where our conversation needs to be because we know Christ is coming back like a thief in the night. It says all eyes going to see him. So we want to be speaking our conversation. We want to be heard in the heavens of heavenly things pertaining to the kingdom of God, man. Understand it. Let's close out. Give me Ephesians uh, chapter 6. I want 10 through 18. The book of Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10. So now that we awake, what we got to do? Finally, my brethren, uh -huh. be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Right, so now we got to strengthen ourselves. Put on the whole armor of God. So now that we got the strength, now that we woke up out of the coma, we strengthen ourselves with the scripture. So now we got our muscles, spiritual muscles built up to put the armor on now. Right, you see what's going on here. Come on. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right, and you got to have strength to stand against the wiles of the devil because he coming from every angle. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is like I see it all the time. Like, brothers, brother, study, 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 study. And then as soon as the trial come, you forget all the scriptures. That's why you got to apply Malachi 3.16. Exactly. Got to. Go ahead. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right. So no matter what, somebody might come up to you, your trial might come. It might be a brother made out of flesh and blood, but it's a spirit on that brother or sister to pull you out the spirit, to put you back in the dead estate. Read. And that might be in or out the truth. Exactly. But against principalities, mm -hmm. against powers, mm. against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Damn. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that's what your fight is against, brothers and sisters. Make no mistake about it. We see things because we small and we coming from a lower state. So we don't really think that we're out here taking down powers and principalities and wickedness in high places. Oh, yes, right. you are. That's all that Operation Mockingbird and all everything that. they told you saw on the screen. That's the spiritual yeah, wickedness the, in yeah, high places. Yeah, you out there fighting against the, the, the crooks in action. Come on. Read verse 13. Wherefore? Take unto you the whole armor of God, mm -hmm. that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Right, because all of us are going to have an evil day pulling up on us, one way or another. And we want to make sure we're standing on our feet. Read. And having done all to stand. This is having done all to stand. Meaning what? You got to endure those wiles and, 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 and traps and snares. Read. Stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth. Right. So meaning what? Uh, Officer Kalai said, having your loins girt about with the law so you know when that trial comes. No. I'm a maneuver in wisdom. Just fall back and say, what, what would be the path of wisdom? 
those things that we can help when, when we're going through it to ask yourself, what would be the path of wisdom? What should I do? And that's that time to apply the scripture say, do nothing without counsel. Exactly. That's the point. Read on. And heaven on the breastplate of righteousness mm -hmm. and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Right. So wherever you go, you giving a godly example. Because you walk with your feet. So wherever your feet take you, you're already prepared with the gospel of how you look to, down to the way that you talk. Come on. Above all, take the shield of faith, mm -hmm. wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Meaning what? The shield of faith meaning what? Uh, it's, give me Romans 8.28. Is that what I want? Okay. Watch this. The shield of faith meaning what? When you're going through these things, you got to keep the long-term goal. Of, read that. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Uh-huh. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So no matter how bad it may get, at the end is to our benefit, even though the, the process might be rough. And that's one thing we got to learn to start in this truth. We got to learn to trust in the process because we all know what the end goal is to get the kingdom. We all know that the kingdom of heaven is coming to the earth. But we get thrown off and we actually got to go through the process of hit that furnace. That You know what? That's. Can I get a scripture? Just right in yeah. the, right there. Oh, let in me the finish middle. this out. Let me finish this okay. out. Okay. To them who are called according to his purpose. Right. So, brothers and sisters, we've been called. Bring out the script, uh, officer. First Peter 1 and 6. Everybody gonna hit this point. Everybody's going to go through this at some point. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though. Now for a season, it need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. There's going to come a season when you're going to go through heaviness because everything in your life is going haywire. It's going to happen. But trust and believe when it happens, the Lord is trying to show you that you're to that point. He's trying to show you how strong you are. Remember, it say he's not going to give you more than you can bear. So when you get that hard trial or you get that, the, it says manifold temptations, that means you're going through a lot of stuff at the same time. Your whole life seems like it's going haywire. Okay? It says that's the time when you're supposed to rejoice. That means you, he's dealing with you and you're elevating spiritually. That's it. Go ahead. Verse 7. The trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's, that's a rock, too. That's, that's acceptable men and women being tried in adversity, right. going through that fire, that's and being, it. Being, being purified. Mm -hmm. So that when Christ comes back, you get salvation. That you get saved. You make the kingdom. That's it. Let's go back to Ephesians. Let's close out 17 and 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Mm-hmm. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. I mean, make sure you got your scriptures on you and in you. Read. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. It says doing what? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Right, because it might not be a brother, you, it might not be a brother or sister there to talk to. That means you got to pray. You got to pray in the Spirit, man. Come on. And watching thereunto with all perseverance. Yeah, and perseverance. Perseverance and supplication for all saints. Right. That's go back to what Officer pulled out in the first Peter. So with that family, we say shalom. Shalom. Most high in Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth